What's going on guys? My name is Wade with Tech Daily and this is it. This is the phone we've all been waiting for. This is, of course, the iPhone 10. I don't think it requires any sort of introduction, but this device really is Apple's first major overhaul of iPhone in a number of years, and I think it's been long overdue. I'm excited to see that edge-to-edge -edge display. I'm interested to check out how all the new gestures feel and if it's something I could get used to. And of course, I'm ready to see if that notch is really a big deal. So without wasting any more time, let's go ahead and unbox this thing and see what that iPhone 10 hype is all about. As far as the packaging goes, nothing too exciting here, although this is the most colorful iPhone box we've seen in a while, of course, to really showcase that display. We'll peel back the plastic wrap, slide open the box, and the first thing we're greeted by is the familiar Design by Apple in California text printed on a little packet that holds a couple Apple stickers, some legal info, and a quick start guide to help you get set up. Underneath all that junk is the iPhone 10 itself. I went ahead and got the 64 gigabyte silver, and yes, I know it totally makes sense to just spend the extra 150 bucks to get four times more storage, but I seriously only use up like 20 gigabytes on my phone, so I really just didn't need it. As far as what else comes inside the box, no surprises here, nothing fancy. You get the usual wired ear pods with a lightning to auxiliary adapter, the small 5 watt charging brick, and a lightning cable. So when I first picked up the phone, I immediately noticed how heavy it was. I'll talk more about the build quality in a second, but with all that glass and stainless steel, this is a hefty device. Setting it up for the very first time, there are a few new options and information. The first is Face ID, of course, no home button and no more touch ID. Face ID is how you unlock the device. And honestly, the setup process was very quick. You sort of just move your head around in a circle and it scans your face twice and that's it. It's very straightforward. And even with my camera in the way, I didn't have any issues. The last couple setup screens walk you through some of the new gesture controls. So it shows you how to swipe up from the bottom to go home, how to launch the app switcher, where control center is. It doesn't show you everything. So you might need to look up how to take a screenshot, for example, but it at least gives you an idea of the basic new controls. The iPhone 10 is the first iPhone with essentially a bezel-less design. The 5.8 inch screen stretches from top to bottom, corner to corner, and while a lot of people are going to debate that notch, I'm going to leave my thoughts on it for my full review in a week or so because I really do think it's something I'll just get used to over time. I will say though that coming from using the larger 5.5 inch plus iPhones the last three years, I really like the form factor of this device. It's still a little larger of a device, but it's a lot more comfortable than using an iPhone 8 Plus. And really, this is something Apple probably should have done a long time ago, but I'm happy they finally caught up with everyone else. At a thousand bucks, the price for the iPhone 10 is outrageous. It's a lot of money for a smartphone, no matter how you look at it. But the all glass and stainless steel design of this device certainly makes you feel like you're getting a nice, premium, expensive piece of hardware in your hand. I know that flashy stainless steel chrome finish along the edges isn't everyone's cup of tea, but I personally like it. Yes, it's going to get scratched and marked up, but just like the stainless steel Apple Watch, scratches can easily be buffed out, so it's not a huge deal. In my brief time setting up and using Face ID, I have to say that it does work well, but it doesn't seem as fast as Touch ID. And I don't know that it's as convenient as Touch ID was. Again, this is just from playing around with it for a couple of hours, but even though Face ID does what it's supposed to do, I'm still relatively skeptical about whether or not it's inherently better, and I'll have to really put it to the test over the next few days. Also, all of the gestures and swipes and things that the iPhone 10 now requires are definitely taking some getting used to. Swiping to go home from the bottom makes sense, even though I still press down on the screen from time to time as if there was a button there. And swiping from the top corner to get to control center, I think is the most inconvenient new placement, just given how much I have to shift my hand. But like anything else, I'm sure I'll get used to it. And luckily notification center works with the center pull down, so no real change there. What I've had the most trouble with is launching the app switcher. You sort of have to swipe up and hold for a second until your phone vibrates. And even then it still sometimes falls falls away and doesn't initiate. This, for whatever reason, is taking me a lot of extra time to get right. But you can also swipe from the bottom left and right to go back and forth between apps. And I really like this addition, and it's probably something I'll use a lot over time. One last thing I immediately noticed is that while the screen is technically 5.8 inches corner to corner, the usable area of the screen in a lot of apps, particularly third-party apps since I know they haven't been optimized yet, but even stock iOS apps, it's just not the best use of space. I don't mind how the keyboard is shifted up quite a it from the bottom, I think that makes sense. But the home gesture area for some apps is really small and for others it's giant. And the notch up top 
really pushes some margins down on apps too. And landscape on apps like Safari, Mail, Notes, and others require like pillar boxing basically, those side margins. The Mail app, it's really noticeable, which I can see why it's necessary, but I don't know, it just feels like I'm not getting to take full advantage of the screen. Again, I've only had the device for a few hours now. This was just my unboxing and initial impressions, and I really look forward to using this device for a while before I jump to any conclusions. I'm interested to see how the cameras hold up against the competition, especially the front-facing camera with portrait mode, and of course, all the great and emojis I'll make and send to my friends. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if you ended up getting an iPhone 10, and if you have any thoughts or opinions on the device so far. Also, be sure to follow Tech Daily on Twitter, and subscribe to the Tech Daily YouTube channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys later.